Well, welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're on site in Stowe, Ohio. Now behind me you see the sign that uh, says a company by the name of National Machine Company. Don't be fooled. This company has a world-class TIG welding shop that does titanium, and we're about to show you some of their features. We're on site at a company called National Machine, where we're doing titanium welding. Now, this is kind of a specialized method of welding because titanium is sometimes welded on the outside with special purge devices, but this is a controlled environment. And periodically, you'll have customers that ask you to put their part in a controlled environment. Now, it looks very much like a sandblast cabinet, but it really isn't. Uh, what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to end up putting in titanium parts inside the chamber, filling it up with argon, and this welding technician, Jeff, is actually going to reach in and do all of his welding inside the chamber looking through this port. Now, there's a couple of special features on here you need to know about. He's got a couple of areas where he's inserting argon, so he runs a considerable amount of argon and this uh, chamber will actually pressurize and you'll see oxygen actually through this bubble. It's kind of a neat little setup, it's a ping pong ball, but it'll tell you that you have activity or you have air coming out. So the oxygen rises, gets displaced by argon. So once the argon reaches a certain level, and how do you know that certain level? We have an oxygen analyzer. So until this oxygen analyzer gets down to below 100, uh, parts per million, and typically it'll be below 50 parts per million, then the argon isn't clean enough. So he's going to do actually put a dummy piece in here to, to do a test run on. He's going to light an arc, make sure the argon is clean. Now he's also got factory parts in here. So once he establishes that the inside of this is clean, he'll go ahead and start his TIG welding. So uh, Jeff, why don't you show me your operation here? We open up the tank here, and we're going to put these four parts inside. And I've got some caps here that I'm also going to weld onto the end cap, and my test piece as well. It's already been used, but it's good enough. I have my ar my uh, weld wire already in here. So my it's already pre-cut, ready to go. Yes, to size to fit inside the tank here. And I got my torch. Close her up. Turn these valves on here. Okay, so you're turning on the argon. Yep. You can see the, you can see the ping pong ball going. Yep. Okay, so oxygen's coming out of this right now as yes. we speak. Yes. And so, how many minutes do you think it's going to take to to get this cleaned out? It takes five to eight minutes for this tank to purge out completely. Okay. Now just as a rough rule of thumb, anytime you're using a purge chamber, if you want to calculate how long it's going to take, it usually takes eight times displacement. So calculate your cubic feet and multiply it times eight. That's how much argon you're going to use just to get started. So we'll, we'll wait uh, eight to ten minutes and uh, let you do a test piece. Okay. Okay, we're, we're getting ready to weld inside this purge chamber. Now this purge chamber has been pumping argon through it for about eight to ten minutes. Now Jeff has a test piece in here just to make sure he does two things. One, he evaluates the parts per million of oxygen with his oxygen an an analyzer and he's down to about 16 parts per million. So theoretically everything is good to go there. But you know what? Air pockets do get in there. They get entrapped. So he ran his torch around into the corners and he got all the oxygen out or all the air pockets as he thought. So he's going to do a test run on a scrap piece of material and if everything comes out right it's going to have silver color. So Jeff go ahead and run the test. And that's acceptable. 
okay it looks good it's cooled off um, it's perfectly silver and uh, as you can tell Jeff can't pull his arms out he's he's there he's ready to go and uh, he's getting ready to do a part now so I'm gonna back off and let him do his job and he's gonna go ahead and weld up some of these titanium parts Side of a purge tank is you don't have to worry about gas coverage because the entire tank is purged out with argon. You can just keep on welding without having to have any gas coverage of where you weld it. And there's a Nice fuse, you can still see it red, cherry hot, still cooling off. Yeah, Jeff's got good arc initiation there. He's got a puddle at about 3,000 degrees, dabbing very consistently. He's getting to the end of his weld. He's tapering off so he doesn't have any star cracks or cracks that form after re-solidification. Okay, he reinitiates the arc, and just so you know, we're running on DC negative or DC minus. He's got a really good technique going there. And at 75 amps, he's got a pointed tungsten. Now he can use either 332 diameter or 1 16th. You know, the 1 16th will withstand about 90 to 100 amps. and he's just having to do this several times eventually he'll get all the way around okay good tie-in to his weld his last weld uh, he's going to have an awful lot of starts and stops in this and mostly because he's in a purge chamber it's just very uncomfortable to work and uh, staying in there for any length of time gets uh, gets very hot. He's holding up real good though. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, another good arc start and a good tie-in to his start. And uh, it looks like he's coming around 360 here. Another interesting thing inside of a chamber, you've got so much argon going in, the pressure is trying to push you out of it. Before and after, right there on the table. Very good dabbing technique. Now this is one of the slot burn downs and what he's doing is he's doing a burn down first and then he'll come along a little bit later and add a, a fill pass on top actually adding filler material. So you'd almost consider this a root pass. Okay, now he's coming along with that second pass that I was talking about. Now he's dabbing filler. Now he'll get the consistency all the way across the well that he wanted. Now you probably notice he's got a pretty good travel speed, and uh, what that does is it helps eliminate grain growth in titanium. Grain growth is not a good thing. Typically it enlarges and it weakens the material. So you want to keep things flowing quickly. Well, Jeff just finished his weld inside, so he's inspecting it. We're letting the part cool off for just a few minutes. Then we're going to let Jeff get out and uh, open the chamber up and show you the results. So are, you, are you ready, Jeff? Yeah. That's a good part.
So this is the weld that you just made. You had them pre-tacked yes. inside the chamber? Yes, we tack them inside the chamber. No, excuse me. We tack these up inside of a fixture that is a certified, a certified fixture with argon running through the other outside yeah. ends. Okay. And then we finish the product inside this tank so that the inside of the tube has uh, got argon running through it and the outside as well. Okay, so you have hole orientation, the fixture holds it in place, you tack it, yes. and then you put it in here, do your finished welds inside the chamber, Yes. and uh, it looks good. Yes, now, is, is, can I hold this part okay now? Yes, You're finished with cool, it? Yes. Okay, I want to identify a couple of things on here. If there's ever a question in titanium welding, obviously silver is perfect. Uh, you're going to get some other colors in your welding. If you'll notice, there's a little straw colored there. And you know, believe it or not, that straw is acceptable. Now, we have a chart that's that's put out, and you'll find it on weld.com as well. They use the same chart here. It's a color chart. It tells you whether or not you've got colors that are unacceptable. Now, typically, purple and blue are unacceptable. But we're going to show you some parts that have a little bit of blue so far outside the heat-affected zone you have to use good judgment on that because that is a non-affected zone. It's okay. So uh, let's take a look at this. Let's recap. This is straw. Still acceptable. You see a little uh, a haze right there of straw. Still acceptable. Silver right here. Absolutely excellent. And uh, again, silver. So all the welding that I've seen in this company has just been absolutely top-notch. So when you, when you finish your welds here, make sure you turn the gas off. It does use a lot of argon. And again, one of the reasons that we use the chamber is some of the companies actually mandate to use a chamber so you don't have a breeze or you don't have any issues with uh, uh, purity of your argon or having oxygen mixed in with your argon. So uh, as you can tell, it's a little tougher uh, putting your hands in there, manipulating around. And uh, so my, my personal preference, and Jeff, you can, you can elaborate on this. Do you like welding outside the chamber better or inside? Much better on the outside. On the outside, yeah. productivity is a little bit higher. In fact, it's a lot higher. So uh, anyway, thanks for uh, welding this up for me. You're welcome. Right. Thank you. Well, that's it for now. I really want to thank National Machine for allowing us to come in and film titanium welding. Thanks for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.